Gift Biz Unwrapped, episode 34. It is the number one most powerful influencing tip that anyone can ever do. Hi, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to Gift Biz Unwrapped, and now it's time to light it up. Welcome to Gift Biz Unwrapped, your source for industry-specific insights and advice to develop and grow your business. And now, here's your host, Sue Monheit. Hi there, I'm Sue, and welcome to the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast. Whether you own a brick-and-mortar shop, sell online, or are just getting started, you'll discover new insight to gain traction and to grow your business. And today, I am thrilled to have joining us Jason Troy of Be Extraordinary. Jason is a top business and executive coach, sales trainer, and speaker. At the heart of his strategy is the understanding that people and their relationships are your true wealth. Everything we accomplish in life is with or through other people. He works with experts, entrepreneurs, and executives to help them get known and stand out. And he does this by building key skill sets, creating their brand platform and purpose, and improving their business results. His best-selling book, Social Wealth, The How-To Guide on Building Personal and Professional Relationships, has sold more than 30,000 copies and has been number one in four business and self-help categories. Wow, that is pretty impressive, Jason. Welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me on the show and talk to your fantastic tribe. Is there anything you'd like to add to the intro before we get started? You know, that summed it up really quite well. All right, then we're just going to jump into the content because I know there's a lot of great things to share. As our listeners know, we like to align the conversation around the life of a motivational candle. The light shines on you while you share your stories and experiences. So are you ready to light it up? I am ready to light it up. Okay. So guess what, Jason? You are on your way. You're going to be a speaker at a networking event, and you told everybody to bring some type of a candle and a quote that resonates for them, and you, likewise, being the speaker, are also going to be coming in with your own candle. What color candle are you bringing to this networking event? I am bringing red. And why red? I like it's fire, fiery, it's energetic, and it's just lighting up the room. And that's what each person should do is to go into their strengths and light it up around them. That's a great precursor for what we'll talk about. And what is the motivational quote on that red candle? Vulnerability is the birthplace of connection and the path to feeling of worthiness. If it doesn't feel vulnerable, the sharing is probably not constructive. And that's by Brene Brown. I have to love her. So that speaks to authenticity of who you really are. Right. And I think end of the day, vulnerability is the link into being courageous in your life. And when you don't actually lead with vulnerability in your life, you live a very small life. Because when you start actually leading with vulnerability, also with authenticity, with speaking your truth, and then generous within boundaries, the world lights up around you. Because then you make it safe for other people to do it. And then you start creating magic in all of your relationships from the moment that you start them all the way through. And most people just don't do that, right? Because I have clients right now that I know that I know a lot more than their spouses do, which to me, and these are people who have been married 15, 20 years. So that in many ways, that's a little scary, but also goes the fact that if you're not leading with that, you're not necessarily opening people up. I think that's really true because if you think of a networking event, I'll stick with that since that's been the initial theme here. And so many people are just very rigid. Oh, what do you do? You know, all the common questions, right? And boring ones. Yeah, boring ones. And your point is starting to talk a little bit more in depth, maybe not totally at a networking event, but a little bit something different, something a little more personal than just the obvious basic surface level conversations. Yeah, I ask people all the time, what is your passion? So what are you passionate about in your life? What projects are you working on that you're passionate about? Because you need to get an emotional connection with people because emotions are why we do everything. People talk about logic and being a logical thinker. They're completely illogical when they're actually having a conversation. They're putting stuff together. Because at the end of the day, we're making up stories about everything and we operate on very little facts. And I give an example that if you're in a business meeting and there's a leader asks a question, and you give an answer, and there's someone from across the table that looks at you, rolls their eyes, 
you look back at them and think, well, they must not like me or like what I'm saying or something's wrong with me and how they view me. And the reality is, is all you know is that that person looked at you and rolled their eyes. You have no idea what's going on. But we make up the information in between all that from the start of our thoughts to the end of it with stories because our brain gives us dopamine releases coming up with quick answers. And that's why we do it. But it's not really the reality and the facts. So all emotions and cognition and behavior are in the back seat when we're driving the car. Right. But so what you're really saying here, too, though, is verbal and physical motions will help you create a story that could be right on or it could be way off. Right, exactly. And the easy thing, too, is if you're in a challenging situation with someone and you don't really know what's going on, I say, you know, the story I'm making up is that you don't like this or whatever it might be. And that allows someone else to feel safe to actually give me a response, especially in an area where there could be some conflict. He is find out what they're passionate about because most people are not necessarily passionate about their job, but there are other things. And then you can ask them, you know, what challenges are you having around that? And then from there, you now can start helping someone and helping them with the thing that they're most emotionally charged with and connected with. And I've asked thousands of people, what are you passionate about? And I, I've also asked the question, when's the last time someone's asked you that? And most people's answer are never. Which then gives you the attention right away. You know, you yeah. stand out because of what you've said. So you're meeting someone for the first time. And a lot of people, that's uncomfortable for them, sharing something, especially with a complete stranger. What are some other ways to pull out and get to that point versus the superficial conversation? I love to go with what are you passionate about? What do you love to do? I ask people, like, what's your dream vacation? I mean, asking them questions about passions or things of escape are way better questions to ask someone initially because they're not the common trend that people have. Because the problem is if you go to a networking or any sort of conference or I don't care where you meet someone, people are asked common questions. Where are you from? What do you do? They tune you out because they've had boring conversations so many times in the past and those conversations have led to nothing. Then you get people who are thinking about, well, what do I have to do for the day? What do I have to make for dinner? What trip do I want to take? All these things when they're actually in the conversation so they're not present and they're just they're checked out. Right. And so you've got to get them present and you have to ask them questions where they actually haven't been asked them before. So it forces them to focus without having to try to continually ask those boring questions and going on and on and shooting them like a machine gun at them and getting answers out and then trying to find some common ground on those answers because it's also harder to find common ground on where are you from? Oh, I'm from, you know, I'm from Chicago. Well, it's great, but if you're from New York, how to find common ground? <laughs> it's not easy. Right. And you look like you're really trying as well. It looks like a forced fit. Because then you have to say, oh, yes, my, my uh, grandmother grew up there, and that might be nice, but it's a forced fit, and people know you're just trying to fish to find common ground. Do you find that asking those types of more personal or questions that are getting to an emotion, people will share right away, or do you have to share something more personal on your end first? Well, I think part of it is your nonverbal communication. So when you are in a place where you've done your inner work on yourself – you then show up and people just feel more comfortable around you because you just put them at ease because of where you're at. But I also think it's always helpful to share with something. Right? I have a client who's in Italy and he's from New Zealand. And I tell him when he goes out to talk to people about wine and joke about, yes, oh, geez, let's get a glass of New Zealand white wine because it's better than any Italian one. And they'll make joke about it. And they say, yes, my family's from New Zealand and I grew up there. And that's a great way to lead with talking about where he's from, and also just sharing something about who he is as a person in a way that's sort of funny and also is a little disarming. And it's just starting in that place where you're just opening up. So if you can start with that and share with people in a conversation little things about you that are small, then they'll feel comfortable to start sharing as well. Got it. So we've kind of jumped right into the topic here and possibly to summarize or to put some bullet points behind all of this for our listeners, what would you say if you're going to narrow this into three key ways that are the best things to do to be able to stand out, get known, and create intrigue with the person that you're talking to, what would they be? Just three bullets. I would say one, you have to build rapport. 
And the two ways of building rapport are asking the right questions. And one is, what are you passionate about? And what are your challenges? And the second way to build rapport is really through your body language and how you interact with someone. And you can do things such as NLP, mirroring, and other things which also can help bring you in more rapport with people and pace and lead as far as your tone of your conversation with someone else and matching what they're doing. What is NLP? Neuro Linguistic Processing. So it's a way for you to get in connection with someone else through nonverbal communication. Okay, like you were talking about. Yeah, so mirroring someone else and matching their tone of voice, also using language that they're using as well. And so those things can really be helpful. Now, if you don't ask the right questions, doing the body language and NLP isn't near as helpful. And I tell people not to really necessarily focus on that. If you can do and learn and start putting use a couple things here and there, it definitely is helpful. But you've got to ask the right questions because otherwise you're not getting information. It's so interesting that people will start doing the same thing. I have a couple of friends who speak really, really, really loud. And I've started just when I respond to them, I respond in a really softer voice instead of trying to match them and get higher. And they don't even know it, but their voice goes down. It's crazy. It's crazy how this works well. If you mirror people, they will start actually following what you're doing. It's pretty funny. And I tell people to try it. I mean, and you can see how well you are in sync with another individual. Because if if that doesn't work at all, typically it says you're not on the same page, even if you think you are. Interesting. Okay, so number one was build rapport. Two is you have to build likability with someone. They have to like you. And I think that the easiest way to do that is be present. It sounds so simple, but most of the time when people are in a conversation with someone else, they're looking around, they're thinking about what they have to do later in the day, they're thinking about what they're going to have for dinner, they're thinking about 5,000 things, and they're not actually present. Or thinking about where they're, what they're going to say next versus listening to what you're saying. Exactly. And so the challenge there is just be in the moment because whatever that you're thinking about saying and planning and doing is being present because 90% of communication is nonverbal. So people can tell when you're not focused and when you're not present. And that immediately says to them, you don't care. And then they check out. A lot of it's an unconscious process. So they ain't even aware of it. They just know that they don't really enjoy the conversation that they're having or that they'd rather have another one with someone else. And so that part of it doesn't work. I see being an active listener as well is part of likability. And the easiest way about being an active listener is to repeat back some information that that person has said to you. And then also try to connect it with some common ground that you're having in a conversation. Because that's an easy way at that point, because someone then feels like you walk down their path, you get it. There also is empathy given, which is one of the extremely strong emotions that you can give someone else is to be empathetic. And most people just don't try doing that. And that really goes a long way. This is a really good point, Jason, because I think a lot of people go to networking events. They're putting in their time and passing out business cards and feeling that just by being there, doing their little 20-second spiel, they've put in what they needed to do for that networking event. And given the majority of people go into it that way, for someone to go in based on what you're talking about, really being present, listening, repeating, and really getting to know somebody on a deeper level makes way better use of your time and more productive and probably better connections leading into the future. Way better connections. And you can do it really quickly too. Because also what will happen is, If you start asking people the questions we talked about and also just doing things to build more likability, you're going to stand out because everyone else is doing the opposite of what you're doing. That's one of the easiest things to do is often doing less is a lot more because people sit in their head. They think about all the people they've met that night. And it doesn't matter. Maybe it's you're going to a charity event or a nonprofit event like at a museum or opera or someone else. And you really will think in your head, all the people that you met and the person that's going to stand out is the person who's going to be doing things differently than everyone else. And so staying in your comfort zone, make sure that you don't stand out and that it's going to be a lot more challenging to build intrigue for someone to want to follow up with you. And you've got to build intrigue. Someone's got to say, wow, that person is awesome. I want to spend more time with them or they seem really smart or connected 
or something's got to go in their head for you to stand out. So you've got to do something different. And if you just ask them the same boring questions everyone else does, you're just hoping that something you're saying in that conversation is going to help you stand out rather than having a pattern that where you're automatically going to stand out just by showing up. Right. I mean, it definitely takes more energy to work the networking event in that way, sure. but you're already there. You're already putting in the time. So you might as right. well get the most out of it you possibly can. And after a while, if you do this all the time, it's habitual. So then it's no effort at all. It's part of who you are, right? But anything you're going to change, you're going to have to institute new habits in your life. And it's going to take you to be intentional and purposeful on them. And it takes a lot more work. But then you get to a point where it takes a lot less work and you're making all this magic happen. Exactly. And that's what you're there for in the first place. Yep. You know, and just one more point as we're talking about networking events, because I think it fits in well here, is it's not the number of contact, new contacts that you make coming out of a networking event. It's the number of really serious relationships you form. You know, not that you're going to get into half hour conversations with everybody, but it's way better to walk out with two or three really solid potential contacts and relationships where you want to extend the conversation later than walking out with 50 business cards. Yeah, it's not a business card collection. I mean, I think there's ways to operate where you can get both a lot of people and quality you want to get in there and start building a good connection with someone within five minutes where you're creating enough intrigue that they want to follow up with you and then just exchange contact information and move on. Because the event itself is a gold mine for you to mine. So you want to get in there and meet as many people as you can, create intrigue, and then set up follow-up meetings with them. Or do something like set up a dinner or a brunch and invite these people and get them all together because then you are the connector from everyone. And that works really well too. I've done that plenty of times and it's fantastic. That's a great idea. Yeah. Because like, part of this is you really don't know the people that you want to spend time with more either personally or professionally right away. So my point is why go in to find all that out, do it more safer environment. So I tend to invite people out to group things because then I can get to know people slowly and figure out if they're the right fit in my life, wherever that might be. And also then I'm bringing other people together. So I am the hub and everyone around me is a spoke. And that's extremely powerful place to be. If you're that hub, it shows everyone that you're very confident, secure in who you are. You're also generous. You lead with giving. And that makes you in a really special place. And you don't even need to be that person. That's just the perception and the byproduct of getting people together together. Because if you ask people, they might say to you, you know, I only want a couple of close people in my life or I don't need that many really close business colleagues. But everyone, when you ask them, do you want to meet a new person? They all say yes. I've yet to find a person who says they don't want to meet someone new. So there's always an opportunity. And if you're the person that can bring new people into other people's lives, it's an extremely powerful place to be. And Malcolm Gladwell wrote about this in his famous book called The Tipping Point. It's a connector. Right. And if you can be a connector, it's the highest value you can give to someone else. And no money, no opportunity is going to trump that. It just it's that's how valuable it is for people. And there are people out there making seven figure more businesses and all they do is connect people. Really good. All right. So we're on these three ways to stand out. And we've talked about building rapport. We've talked about likability. What's the third one? You have to build trust with people. I mean, trust is the fabric that holds society together, it holds your relationship with someone else. And you really need to do that. And how you do that is to lead with giving. And that's why you ask someone early on, what are the challenges you're having? What's really holding you back from doing whatever their passion is or whatever it is that they really are interested in their life? Because if you can help them with that, they will do anything for you. And if you ask a question, what are your challenges, you can either help them in the moment. You might have a con also a contact that they could talk to. You might have a book idea. You might have another reference or resource. Or you might say, I don't really know. Let me go look into it. And then you take their card and follow up with them. Or it might be that you find a resource that can help them next month. And then you follow up with them and say, hey, I just met somebody who could really help you with what you were talking about. Yeah. And that's the most important thing. And if there's opportunity, you can tell them, you know, what challenges you're having. And that's a great thing to ask someone. And also in a conversation there, the other part of it is that you can ask that. And also, whom do you know that I should speak to? Right. And if you ask them a question, who do you know? 
it's a lot better than asking, do you know anyone? Because a lot of the times the contacts that someone can give you are way more important than the actual information. Because a lot of times they're not going to have a job. They're not going to have a lead that you need and whatever it is that you need specifically or have that information. But they'll know people that are. So part of every conversation is when you lead with giving, when you want to ask for something back, people are much more ready, willing, and able to do it for you because they know that you're a person who doesn't keep a scorecard and you lead with that in your life. And the only people that don't have scorecards in people's lives are people in their inner circle, meaning could be a spouse, could be a best friend, could be a business partner. It could be anyone, family members. And so when you psychologically put yourself in that place, it's a really magical thing that can happen in that relationship right away. You don't need to wait. Most people think that they have to ask these questions in the fourth, fifth, sixth conversation. But why? You can ask them right away. I love the way you've put this about being able to be in the inner circle. There's no scorecard at that point. Years ago, after I moved to Dallas and I didn't know a single person here, I was going out to a lot of you know charity events and nonprofit events, which I think are the best places to go and network and meet people. I'd have people I'd meet out in different places and they'd be introducing me as, you should meet Jason, he's a great guy. Jason's the mayor of Dallas. Jason's a fantastic person you should get to know. And I you know, knew some of these people for less than 30 minutes. I saw them multiple times. They probably knew almost next to nothing about me. And that's how they're leading with that introduction. And I thought to myself in the beginning, these people are crazy. Something's going on. And then I realized it was something that I was doing that most people just don't do. And I could do it so fast. And I could create that level of rapport. And that's something that anyone can do and master if they actually practice it. Because all social communication and emotional skill sets are all learned behaviors. It's just like going to the gym. You aren't going to get better at them if you practice them once a month. And even if you're an introvert, you can be really good at this. I have friends, I have clients of mine who are introverts that are really, really good at networking and relationship building. They do it in a different way, but they're equally as powerful as an extrovert. Okay, so that's perfect because this leads into my very next question for you, which is, you're right, a lot of people going to these events is very uncomfortable. You know, what if they walk in and don't know anybody? How do they integrate in? What do they say? You know, everyone kind of turns a light onto themselves and like, you know, am I going to look unprofessional? Am I just going to be standing in a corner? You know, that kind of thing. And it's interesting because... As you get to know more and more people who you consider to be leaders, they also say, well, you know, I'm really not that extroverted. You know, I'm really pretty shy, but you would never know it when they go to these events. Based on all that, what steps or advice would you give someone who's listening here and is like, oh, my gosh, there's a networking event coming up next week. Maybe I should change my ways. How do I do that? How do I enter into a room and be more confident and change and do something different than I've always done before? Do you have any advice for those people? Right. If I'm going out tonight before I leave, no matter where I'm at, I like to listen to some music or I'll have some affirmations. I'll tell myself I'm going to have another great night as usual. I'm going to go and walk in a room and I visualize people giving me a high fives and hugging me and just really being engaged in that moment. And I think that helps to start having visual cues. Listening to music helps people as well. So get them a little bit more fired up. And I think that's important. I think for some clients and friends of mine, I've recommended that they contact the organizers and ask to work the check-in table. Because if you work the check-in table on the first or second shift to to check people in, you meet people as they come in. You also get more familiar with the room. So you feel comfortable in it. And you also can meet some of the people that are running the group and they'll know people that are coming to the event. So they'll introduce people to you as well. And it's also easier when you work and offer to do that because then you feel like you're a part of something and you feel like you're owning it. And you can go up and walk up to someone and say, you know, welcome. Thanks for coming. And you're a part of the organization. And people say, oh, well, do you are you a part of the group? And you could say, well, yes, I volunteer for the first time tonight. And you can have that as a conversation. But also people are coming, checking in, and they're seeing you sitting there, and they have to talk to you, right? So they're, you're having a reason to engage with them because they need to check in, pay, or whatever it might be. And that is really helpful because then when your shift is over and you walk out, you'll be meeting people for the second time. 
So that's really helpful. The other thing too is I love to introduce people to other people. It is the number one most powerful influencing tip that anyone can ever do. And it makes people a little awkward initially, but everyone feels like that, but it always works. And what I mean by this is let's say I'm on the way to getting food or the bar or someplace where people are lining up. If you're standing there, there's going to be people all around you, typically. And so if there's someone on my right, I'll say to them, hey, how's it going? You know, what's on your agenda this week? How did you learn about this organization? Are you a member? I'll ask them some little tidbit questions. And whatever their answer is, it doesn't really matter. I might ask them one other question. And then there'll be someone on my left. And I'll look over to that person on my left. And I'll say, how's it going? And they'll say whatever they're going to say. And then I'll literally use my index fingers and I'll take them from outside of my body and I'll cross them over and cross my arms and I'll say simultaneously, hey, you two should meet each other. Let's have some fun here. I'll say something else and it doesn't really matter. And they'll start talking to each other. And I don't even know any of their names. Like I don't even ask people their names at that point because they'll do that then and I'll learn their names. And I can do that with a person behind me as well. And I just interrupt people because people want to meet other people and they appreciate it and they don't feel like it's interrupting. And you can now meet all these people. And then what happens is when you start doing that and the conversations may run a minute, they may run 30 seconds, they may run five minutes, but you don't have to be around them all the time. You can just walk away and do whatever you want. But then when you walk around the room, you're getting a great introduction to new people, right? That person is going to say, hey, you should go meet Jason. And they'll be like, oh, wonderful. How do you know them? Right. I love all the detail that you gave and the visual. And I'm going to actually use that at one of my next events. Works every time I've done it. Hundreds of thousands of times. And, you know, the worst case scenario you're going to have is someone will just say hi and walk away. And I've had that happen before. And that does. But that's the worst that happens. The best that happens is they start talking to each other and love the conversation. And you now you are the hub that brought the spokes together. And everyone will remember that the rest of their life. And I have people here who do this that have gotten married run marathons and taken trips and I'm the person that how they got connected. Oh, that is very cool. Right. So I hold a special place with them for doing nothing. A lot of times these people are just acquaintances in my life. Like I don't really even know them all the time. This happens. I went to a Dallas Mavericks game and I ran into a couple of people that were there together that I actually introduced at a function a couple of years ago and that I've not seen in a really long time. And they even told me that when I was there and I thought that's just the magic of doing this. Yeah, sure, it takes you out of your comfort zone and everyone's nervous doing this the first time and they feel like they're focused on their words. But the words don't matter because people want to meet new people. So they're not focusing on your words. They're looking at that other person. In the back of their head, they're thinking, what am I going to say? So your words are like blah, 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 blah. All they're knowing is they now have a window to talk to someone else that they didn't have before. Really, really good input. Thank you so much. We're going to move now into the reflection section. This is a place where we look at you, Jason, and what's helped you to succeed along the way. And this answer is probably going to be very obvious, but what natural trait do you have that you believe has helped you to be as successful as you are now? The most undervalued, underused trait that we have in our life today is curiosity. And I think curiosity is absolutely something that is essential. That's allowed me to figure out what I've done. It also has led me to be much more creative in my life and creative in the sense of not just doing art or music, but being creative of thinking about things in a different way and being innovative in my life. And that is what's really helped me figure this out because I've done things that other people are unwilling to do on a consistent basis in my life. And I've learned that the more uncertainty I can live with, the better my life is and the more opportunities that come about. Because your mind isn't closed to new options that present themselves. Right. And I'm trying new things. I'm being open. I'm being vulnerable. I'm being more authentic. I'm speaking my truth. I'm doing things that are putting me out there that are uncertain and they're in levels of discomfort. But that's where the magic in life happens. And you'll find that people who do that have a much higher quality of life and they're much more financially successful and they're much more fulfilled. The magic happens outside of your comfort zone. Who says that? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. I love that quote. It's so true. What tool do you use regularly to help you keep productive or to create balance in your life? 
you know, it's a pretty simple. I have a to-do list that I use on my phone. I also just calendar things in. I think one of the challenges people have, and I tell all my clients, is that calendar your life. Because if during the day, you don't write down, I'm going to exercise, or I'm going to take 15 minutes to go meditate, or I'm going to go take time to go to a networking event, or whatever it might be, you just won't do it. And you tend then to keep putting other people first and yourself last. And in life, you have to put yourself first because you don't have enough to give other people. And it's a misnomer to put other people first. You can't keep balance in your life unless you calendar it in. So how much time do you take out of your day, let's say, calendaring versus doing? How detailed do you go and how much time does it take you to do? I do it pretty broadly, right? So what I'll do is tonight I go to a group exercise class. And so I write that down on my calendar. So I know that it's there. Um, if I look out during the week and there's events I'm doing, I put those in there so I can plan my week ahead of time and know what I'm doing, mentally be prepared for the days that are much more challenging, right? So if there's a big presentation on Thursday for a client, I've got to work on. So I know on Tuesday and Wednesday, I've got to block out time. So if I block out all this time, there's less clutter in my head because of my calendar. Right, I have time every day where I read. Well, that's important to put out there because I don't need to think about stuff. It's just there. And so I, you don't have to be that detailed, but if you start on Saturday or Sunday planning out your week, it's much easier because you're not worried about missing something, forgetting things, leaving it off. You're much more intentional and purposeful of what's going on. And it's also helpful for introverts because they have to be much more purposeful about going out and networking and meeting people because of who they are. And they've got to find time to recharge their battery. So it's much easier when you can know that on Thursday from six to eight, you're going to go to a networking event, because then you can do whatever necessary around that time, prepare yourself and not to burn yourself out or get yourself in a challenging place. And you don't end up at the end of the week saying, Oh, man, I meant to do this this week. Exactly. And it helps you remember other things that you need to do. And also just keep yourself accountable, right? Part of it, is having calendaring things in is now you're accountable for it because it's in front of you. But when it's in your head, you're not. So you can procrastinate and not do it. Right. But if it's on a calendar, you have to be accountable to it because it's there. All right. So I think I heard that reading is one of the things that you schedule into your calendar. Yes. What book have you read lately that you think our listeners could find value in? So I love this book called Rising Strong from Brene Brown just came out in August. And it's absolutely fantastic book at how to rumble and deal with things in your life that are really challenging and really get in tap with more of your emotions and your blind spots. And so I highly recommend that. And it's great for business and personal use. I love another book I'm starting to read called The One Thing by Gary Keller. And that's really a great book as well. It talks about, you know, how to develop your one thing in your life. So I love the one thing, but I haven't heard Rising Strong. So I'm going to have to go check that out. That sounds really interesting. Yes. Great book. Gift Biz listeners, just as you're listening to the podcast today, you can also listen to audiobooks with ease. I've teamed up with Audible for you to be able to get an audiobook just like Rising Strong or The One Thing for free. All you need to do is go to giftbizbook.com and there you can make a selection for your free book. That's giftbizbook.com. Okay, Jason, we're winding down now and I would like to present you with your virtual gift. It's a magical box containing unlimited possibilities for your future. This is your dream or your goal of almost unreachable heights that you would wish to obtain. Please accept this gift and open it in our presence. What is inside your box? It is a life filled with amazing, fantastic, loving, vulnerable, authentic people. Because relationships are what we're here for. I mean, in connection is part of a reason for living. And so I want to have those magical people in my life because then everything is unlimited and limitless. Yeah, your life just becomes so much more enriched. It does. And it's in your business, it's all about connection. In my business, referrals are way stronger in every, everyone else's business than it is getting a cold lead. It just is. I don't have to do near the work, and so does everyone else. So cultivating those people in your business and finding them are absolutely critical. And it's the same thing in your life. And the challenging thing, too, in life is that you have to keep finding more people because you may evolve and other people may not as well. And that happens all the time. 
Very few people that were my good friends five years ago are my good friends now because I'm changing and evolving and then most people are just not. And so it's taken me in a whole different path and I've met fantastic new people in my life. I didn't hold on to old relationships to hold on to them. I found new people on my journey and, you know, they've been a really wonderful addition and I think people need to do that. So having a lot of people in your life at different varying levels is important because you never know when someone is going to step up and be in your inner circle. This is a really strong concept, I think, and I appreciate your sharing it with us. If you're friends, you're probably always going to be friends, but the people that are going to energize you and take you to your own next level might change over time, just as you're talking about. And often the other thing too is where our blind spots are, we attract those same people. So when you start doing more work on yourself and really taking and grappling with some hard issues, what's going to happen is you're going to see your life in the world in a new way. And you're going to see other people around you that are having these blind spots and they may not be the people that you want anymore in your life. They may be friends that are now acquaintances of yours and you need new people in your life that really help uplift you and move you forward in your life and want to be around more. Well, I'm going to join all my listeners and wish you that that all comes true in your life. And I seem to think it's going to, Jason. (laughs) It will. It is. (laughs) There you go. How can our listeners reach out to you if they want to know more? Sure. They can go to beextraordinary.tv. That's beextraordinary.tv, all one word. And you can go get free downloads and guides on networking, even if you're an introvert, on personal branding, on how to make breakthroughs, how to do some inner work. And there's you can get link for my book, Social Wealth, on Amazon. There's coaching options there. And next year, there will be a product. There you go. And as you all know, Gift Biz listeners, you can jump right over to the show notes page. And there I will have all the information also on how you can get in touch with Jason. I'm also going to be including his book, of course, in the show notes page as well. So Jason, thank you so much. You've really given us a lot of good information on how we can go out and make ourselves more memorable, more impressionable, connect with people better. And all of that leads to a stronger business. And it's been a real gift having you share things that quite honestly, I've not heard before. So I appreciate your time and all of the insights that you've given us and may your candle always burn. Learn how to work smarter while developing and growing your business. Download our guide called 25 Free Tools to Enhance Your Business and Life. It's our gift to you and available at giftbizunwrap.com slash tools. Thanks for listening and be sure to join us for the next episode. Today's show is sponsored by the Ribbon Print Company. Looking for a new income source for your gift business? Customization is more popular now than ever. Brand your products with your logo or print a happy birthday Jessica ribbon to add to a gift right at checkout. It's all done right in your shop or craft studio in seconds. Check out the ribbonprintcompany.com for more information. After you listen to the show, if you like what you're hearing, make sure to jump over and subscribe to the show on iTunes. That way you'll automatically get the newest episodes when they go live. And thank you to those who have already left a rating and review. By subscribing, rating, and reviewing, you help to increase the visibility of Gift Biz Unwrapped. It's a great 